Still busy with the oscilloscope circuit. Uh, I made now the, or the, the horizontal amplifier that's here and I will publish the schematic as soon as possible. Now we see quite a good say horizontal line. We can move the horizontal line, also ok. Uh, we can set say uh, how uh, much the horizontal amplifier is driven with this, this potentiometer here. That has also a substantial effect. Anyway, I hope to publish the complete schematic as soon as possible. But now I was working on the uh, on the vertical amplifier. This is the horizontal amplifier. It's not much more than say a Darlington made with two high voltage transistors that say sweep the dot over the screen. But of course we also need a, a vertical amplifier. And that's what I was busy with during the past days and it is here on my workbench and uh, I am a little bit afraid of high voltages say uh, sorry to say but that's the truth so I don't want to say um, you say high voltage transformer here that can directly deliver 100 volts or 250 volts, etc. etc. And that's the reason why I use the so called voltage doublers and voltage triplers. And this is a voltage tripler, it's here, made with a few uh, 33 microfarad 400 volts capacitors. And the good thing is that. For this uh, vertical amplifier, we don't need so much smoothing because it only has to amplify voltage. So, tiny voltage in here at the first uh, capacitor, and then it's amplified via a few transistors. And I did not have a real high voltage. NPN transistor, so I use the BD139. It can handle approximately 80 volts collector emitter voltage, and uh, so to in a kind of way compensate that, I used a real high voltage PMP transistor in the end stage and also in the first stage here, etc. So you can see that here. This is the BD139, 80 volts maximum. Here is uh, the real high voltage transistor. It's the MGE350. These are the pin connections of that transistor. And here the pin connections of the BD139. That's NPN, this is PMP. Uh, the, their pin connections are the same. That's, I uh, say, a lucky found. Anyway, here I also used, instead of the standard, uh, say, BC557, that, that can of course never work here. You have to use here a high voltage transistor. And also here a high voltage, and this one, and this one, they all have to be high voltage transistors. So I did a few experiments by adapting, say, an audio amplifier made for 18 volts um, uh, to adapt it that it could work on 100 volts approximately 100 volts now it's 108 volts here is the voltage tripler had to find it out I moved my camera somewhat I know that this perhaps is not Ideal, but it gives a, a good idea about that voltage tripler. 
And the strange thing, or not the strange thing, is that when you have here a 30 volt <coughs> nominal AC output transformer, after this whole tripling, you can get out 250 volts DC when there is no load. So, uh, my advice is always make some load here. I've used here a load of uh, a resistor of 2 mega ohm. After that, say this minus goes here to the minus, the positive goes here to the 330 ohm resistor. This acts as a kind of filter here. There's a 33 microfarad capacitor. Say classic filter circuit to filter it somewhat out, though perhaps it is not necessary, but anyway, it works. So, part 14. Uh, perhaps I will give all the links to the 13 earlier videos about this scope and in the coming days or weeks I will say merge all the circuits together, the horizontal amplifier, the vertical amplifier, so that it works and we have uh, say a simple scope that can be used for frequencies between approximately 5 Hz and perhaps 20 kilohertz. Not so much more to tell. I hope my camera will not suddenly stop. I formatted the card. In the preceding video my camera suddenly stopped. I had not expected that at all. So let's look at how everything was made. Here again the BD139, here the typical high voltage transistor, here again the typical high voltage PNP transistor, here we have again the BD139, here we have that voltage tripler. Please note that you can get a good shock. This seems simple, just as simple as this. This is for instance a high voltage unit out of a classical old school analog camera with say a flash flash tube here and also here you can get a heavy shock because there's much charge heaped up in that capacitor and in this case it is a capacitor of an unknown value but anyway uh, here it is a capacitor it, it's a capacitor of a known value, 22 microfarad, at say 250 volts, that can give a heavy shock, so be very, very careful. And use a bleeding resistor here, that bleeding resistor here. Anyway, let's look to the scope. This is the amplification that the uh, vertical amplifier gives. My scope is now on. Uh, 10. So we have here uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, say 60 volts out at a signal that I've measured of approximately 4 volt. So that's a good amplification. I'm almost sure that this will properly work. Let's see what this. Uh, 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 vertical amplifier can bring in terms of amplification of course I don't know if it is very say uh, sensitive to certain frequencies say that the, the amplification is not uh, exactly the same overall and then I mean from approximately 5 Hertz up to 20 kilohertz but anyway let's look we are now on this is the lowest frequency that it can amplify. I have to change my scope. Say uh, approximately 30 volts on a low low frequency in this order. Now we go to the range of 200 hertz. What does it do there? Well more amplification here, also somewhat more distortion has to do with my, with my sine wave generator. 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50 volts approximately. Next, also approximately uh, 50 volts output in the range from 300 hertz up to 1.9 kilohertz. Now we go to the higher bands. This is strange. I, have, I think it has to do with my sine wave generator. I have to bring the, say, the amplification somewhat down. Again, here, uh, approximately 40 volts amplification in the range to up to 15 kc. And here it stops suddenly. Oh no, it doesn't stop. Well, this is not ideal, surely not ideal. So let me try to give the waveform a somewhat better. Now it's approximately, say, 30 volts. So on the higher frequencies, the, there is some amplification loss. And then I mean above 15 kilohertz. Anyway, sync is a useful circuit given the very, very simple setup of this oscilloscope. Uh, pen over somewhat. I think everything is taught. I had to use real high voltage transistors and I ordered them at Rijgeld in Germany to make this work and I'm absolutely sure that there is a better um, uh, say other transistor the, the NPM say this is the brother and there must be a sister of NPN in uh, in this type number that also has an amplification of approximately 150 and that is very very important when you make such an amplifier for a scope uh, the aim is not to create current here, say to send it into a loudspeaker. In such a case there must be current, but you only have to amplify voltage. This voltage here, output voltage, will be sent to the vertical plates of the oscilloscope. And well, I'm more or less sure that it will work properly. When it doesn't work, I will remove this video from YouTube. Thanks for watching. Always interesting to do all these experiments. I like to do it though it takes an enormous amount of time.